Hello dear learners today we are going to discuss the MCQs from social pharmacy earlier which was known as health education and community pharmacy the chapter which we are going to cover is epidemiology from epidemiology part 2 in part 1 also we have covered few of the MCQs from epidemiology describing the epidemiological studies now part 2 basically focuses on various aspects of epidemiology such as various types of infections or uh, uh, disease related information and uh, storage of vaccines so to start with the first question first question from part 2 include rates related to the health of mother and child are included in dash now coming towards the type of measurements which we have discussed in part 1 there were morbidity measurements mortality measurements so this options like first is fertility measurement morbidity measurement disability measurement or none of these so the correct answer is it is fertility measurement because fertility measurements are the rates which include all the rates related to the health of a child and mother so the name is fertility measurement next question is untoward result of either a diagnostic procedure or treatment in the form of a disease disability or death that means though the either a diagnostic procedure failure or treatment failure because of which whatever the untoward results appear which results into the death of that particular patient or disease disability the kind of disease is like whether it is a infectious disease pandemic disease etrogenic disease or epidemic disease the correct answer is it is etrogenic disease because etrogenic disease says that any untoward result of either a diagnostic procedure or treatment in the form of disease disability or death is etrogenic disease like hepatitis b okay occurrence of hepatitis b after the blood transfusion like uh, leukemia occurs which is due to x ray uh, x rays so all these things like uh, various uh, vaccine reactions like immunological agents reactions all these comes under etrogenic like which can be prevented with proper precaution by the physician but though if pro proper precautions are not taken so these are the untoward results which result into the death or the disease disability so it is etrogenic disease next question is hospital acquired infection is also known as or it is also known by the name whether it is nosocomial infection nosomed infection nasopharyngeal infection or all of them the correct answer is it is nosocomial infection because hospital acquired infection as you all know these infections appear basically when the patient visits to the hospital and it is irrelevant with the disease from which that patient is suffering it is just only due to the visit to the hospital and this can be avoided and if means a particular patient if not uh, visiting to the hospital then that patient would have not acquired this disease so the name it is hospital acquired infection hospital acquired infection like uh, such as uh, that is which is also known as nosocomial infection includes various infections such as urinary tract infection surgical wound infections hiv etc so the correct answer is it is nosocomial infection which is hospital acquired infection next question is which of the given is not a hospital acquired infection so as we just now discussed there are various hospital acquired infections possible like uh, urinary tract infections which are caused due to bacteria like surgical wound infections hiv infections caused due to viruses there can be different fungal infections caused due to fungi superficial infections 
and the last option is it is coronary heart disease so which one of these is not a hospital acquired infection so the correct answer is it is coronary heart disease because coronary heart diseases are generally means no, they are uh, limited to the particular person only in those per persons who are, or the, those patients who are suffering with coronary heart disease they are not uh, spreadable diseases that means uh, communicable diseases coronary heart diseases like which includes like your uh, uh, heart problems like angina arrhythmia etc next question is opportunistic infection can be of dash origin so opportunistic infection uh, options are fungal in uh, fungal origin bacterial origin viral origin or all of them the correct answer is it is all of them opportunistic infections can be of fungal origin also bacterial origin also and viral origin also but before uh, going to that we should understand what are opportunistic infections opportunistic infections are the infections which occur when an opportunity is provided because of the low host defense that means whenever there is a uh, low immunity or low host defense the virus bacteria or fungi will find a chance and will enter into that host and it will cause the infection so the name is opportunistic infection that means th that agent got the opportunity and it infected so the name opportunistic infection so it can be fungal also there can be various superficial fungal infections which are opportunistic in nature there can be various bacterial infections for example urinary tract infection uh, is also which is an opportunistic infection then viral uh, the very famous opportunistic infection such as um, aids hiv so these are the opportunistic infections that which can be of all these origins fungal bacterial viral also next question is because of the low host defense the infection acquired is known as now as we just now discussed because of the low host defense low immunity whatever the infection is acquired that type of infection is whether it is urinary tract infection surgical wound infection hiv infection or opportunistic infection the correct answer is it is opportunistic infection opportunistic infections can be acquired easily because of the low immunity of the patient next question is the host in which sexual part of life cycle of parasite take place whether the host is primitive host whether the host is definitive host whether the host is intermediate host or whether it is obligate host the correct answer is it is definitive host according to the definition of definitive host it is the host in which sexual part of life cycle of the parasite take place so wherein the sexual part of life cycle takes place is definitive host next question is the host in which a sexual part of life cycle of parasite take place is dash whether it is a primitive host whether it is a definitive host whether it is a intermediate host or obligate host the correct answer is it is intermediate host because according to the definition the intermediate host is the host in which a sexual part of the life cycle of parasite take place next question is removal of disease from the whole world is called whether it is eradication surveillance elimination contamination the correct answer is it is eradication eradicating the disease removing the disease from the whole world surveillance is nothing a uh, surveillance cannot be called as the removal of disease then elimination can be removal of disease but elimination is the term when it is specifically confined to a particular uh, country or particular community particular region village so that is elimination or continent and removal of disease from entire world is eradicating the disease so it is eradication next question is infection can be dash whether it can be clinical whether it can be subclinical or whether it can be latent or all of them the correct answer is it is all of them a infection can be 
clinical also, subclinical also, latent also. Next question is, a person or animal which allows lodgement of an infectious agent in the body. This agent is lodged into the body. Such kind of person or animal is known as it is host, reservoir, contaminant or all of them. The correct answer is it is host. Host is the person or the animal responsible for lodging the infectious agent inside the body. So it is host. Next question is, which of the cold chain container is applicable at district or state level? Now, cold chain container, as we all know, cold chain containers are specifically used when it comes to the uh, maintenance of the temperature of vaccine. So, cold chain containers are used for storage of vaccines or immunological products. So, <coughs> there are different types of containers used. The cold chain containers, uh, like uh, specifically if you will call, uh, they are meant for uh, vaccines, storage of vaccines. The cold chain system involves storage of vaccine from the point of manufacture to the point of administration during transport, manufacturing, administration, till these phases, whatever the vaccine's temperature is maintained in the cold chain system it is known and the containers which are used for maintaining the temperature are known as, uh, are known as cold chain containers so whatever the cold chain containers are the containers uh, can be like they are called as vaccines carrier or thermocol boxes which you have seen then refrigerators can be there, ice line refrigerators can be there, freezers are also there, walk-in coolers are there. So, which of these is applicable at district or state levels? According to the size, according to the requirement, they have uh, divided the cold chain containers capacity into levels like district level or state level uh, huge requirement is there, country level again huge requirement is there. Then uh, primary health centers there is a different requirement so like this they have divided the containers uh, which are to be used at different levels so which of these container can be used at district or state level whether it is refrigerator whether it is ice line refrigerator whether it is deep freezer or walk-in cooler the correct answer is it is walk-in cooler because whereas in district and state the demand is very high. So, walk-in coolers are the type of cold chain containers which have like uh, they have the um, desired temperature maintained in a very big double walled room. Like there is a very big room which is constructed and it is maintained at the desired temperature and in this room the person can enter and this kind of room is called as walk-in cooler. That means a person can walk and at a time only two persons can enter and it stores the vaccine for whole district or uh, you can call at state level uh, specifically uh, for three months or even more uh, storage it can uh, acquire so it is walk-in cooler next question is which of the cold chain container is not applicable at primary health care center the options are refrigerator ice line refrigerator deep freezer or walk-in coolers the correct answer is again it is walk-in coolers because at uh, walk-in coolers are applicable to district or state level since the demand is more and it is a big room which is constructed whereas primary health centers don't need that much storage so refrigerators ice line refrigerator deep freezers can be applicable at primary health care center but walk-in cooler is as such not required at the primary health care center level. So, the correct answer is it is walk-in cooler. Next question is, which of these vaccines can't be stored at freezer? The options are DPT, that is diphtheria pertussis titanus, BCG, that is bacillus calmate urine, TT, that is titanus toxide or all of them. 
the correct answer is it is all of them because if you will see the temperature maintenance basically there are two vaccines like uh, one is your polio polio vaccine is there and measles vaccine is there which can be stored for longer period uh, at the district or state level uh, in the freezer but Uh, DPT, DT, TT, BCG. These are few of the vaccines which cannot be frozen. They should not be frozen. So the correct answer is it is all of them. Next question is, which of these vaccine can be stored at freezer? Whether it is polio, measles, both of them or none of them. So as we discussed just now. Uh, the answer is both of them because polio measles are the kind of vaccines which can be stored at freezer next question is vaccines lose their potency on dash whether they lose their potency on exposure to higher temperature storage at cold temperature administration to patient administration by wrong route which of these the correct answer is it is exposure to higher temperature because whenever you are administering it to the patient and administered by if it is administered by wrong route uh, there is no question of potency because these will lead to some different problems and storage at cold temperature is desired for vaccine so uh, there is no question of losing the potency so only when these uh, vaccines are exposed to higher temperature potency losses chances are there so vaccines lose their potency on exposure to higher temperature with this we finish with few of the mcqs from epidemiology part 2 stay tuned for our next part of epidemiology that is part 3 which again covers the mcqs from the same chapter thank you